Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Today we have some more unofficial patch notes from Mike Tendee, the man, the myth, the legend. There will be a link in the description to the patch notes uh, themselves, and uh, in this video we're going to go through them and also have a bit of a discussion about them. So, uh, the first big change uh, is the uh, Hesh nerfs again, and these are for specific uh, Hesh, and it basically seems to be focused around a lot of the 105 guns that we have in game. So it's the L7A3, the M68, and the M68A1 Hesh. So if you want to know which uh, Heshes these are, and I'm just checking, <laughs> I thought my uh, camera died. The M68A1 is the gun on the Abrams, so it's this one here, uh, so that means that this Hesh has been nerfed. Uh, the M68 gun is the one that you find on the M60A, uh, M60A1 AOS, the Rise, whoops, and also the M60 that you find here. So basically all of the M60s and the M1 Abrams. And then the L7A3 is the Leopard 1 that you find here, the Leopard A1A1. Uh, if you go over to the British, they actually have the L7A1, so they don't have the L7A3. Uh, so you don't have to worry about that. But if you go to the Japanese, uh, the STB-1 and also the Type 74 have the L7A3. And I believe they're the only ones which actually have uh, the L7A3. So that's all of the, uh, that's all of the stuff when it comes to which ones are affected. If I have missed a gun, just understand that, uh, it may be worth checking for yourself, but I believe that's all of those uh, guns in the game. Now, uh, the nerf is, or the change, is this means uh, that, uh, well, the explosive type has been removed. So this means that the Hesh will no longer have any HE effects. Hesh will only have an effect if it pens a surface. So what this means is, you know when you hit an enemy with Hesh, and it doesn't penetrate, but it still has the opportunity to annihilate a track, a gun, a cannon breach, basically knock out the tank's effectiveness on the battlefield, but also not kill it. And uh, this is why HEs from stuff like KV-2s can be kind of deadly, even if you don't kill an enemy, uh, what you can do is you can knock it out of the battle for a bit, and uh, if you track it and also get its gun, which is quite easy to do, then what you can do is get an ally to finish it off. So overall, this is a straight nerf uh, to the Hesh of these top tier vehicles, and it basically means that uh, it becomes useless again, unless you're facing stuff which doesn't have a lot of armor. Uh, so overall, it's still uh, the Hesh on stuff like the Chieftain and the Conk is still okay, or the 120mm Hesh is not changed. It's just a bunch of the 105mm Hesh. Uh, I've actually seen it uh, have a bit of a comeback, especially from Leopard 1s. I don't really know why, because I don't know why you wouldn't use the Heat FS unless you're struggling for silver lines. But what I found is a lot of people have been using it to knock guns, to knock breaches, and then rush at the enemy, kind of like what they used to do before. And as somebody who enjoys stuff like the Conqueror, um, the heavier tanks, which need to sit back, kind of like the M103, this is a nice change. Uh, but for the Leopard drivers, uh, I don't think it will affect any Abrams driver. I don't know a single Abrams driver who uses Hesh. And same with the M60. So this basically will just affect stuff like the STB and the Leopard in the long run. Most of the time, Hesh isn't the best round to use. You normally have a better one, whether in the form of Heat FS for stuff like uh, the L7A3 um, or APFS DS uh, with the Leopard A1A1 and the Type 74. The M68, uh, generally APFS DS or Heat once again. And then the M68 A1, the Abrams gun, you're normally firing APFS DS. So Overall, it's not that much of a change, uh, because most people aren't using them, but for the people who are on stuff like the Leopard 1, yeah, you kind of get uh, screwed a little bit here. Uh, but I don't think this will change that much, just because it's not used a lot. The T-114's heat, so if you don't know what the T-114 is, uh, if we go to the American tree here, this is the T-114, 8,020 Golden Eagles. It's a rank 5 scout tank, it has a 3-stage autoloader, uh, so as you can see, here are the three, uh, well not stage, but a three ammo autoloader, and then you have to reload the autoloader. 
But basically it's not too bad. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of armor. It does get hull broken, I believe. But the main issue with it is that its gun's a little bit bouncy, so you can't fire on the move. And you have to wait to fully stop to fire. Very much the same issue as something like an AMX 1390. Overall, still okay though, still useful. The heat and heat anti-tank grenade on it, so as you can see on the modifications, it has this heat shell here. It's the only shell it actually gets in the game, which is kind of sad. Uh, they've changed the uh, ricochet chances on it. So at zero degrees, uh, the ricochet chance is 100%. Uh, at 18 degrees, it's 50%. At 20 degrees, it's 25%. And at uh, 90 degrees, it's also 0%. So pretty much, they've just added in a few new ones. So at 15 degrees, it's now 100 as well. At 18, it's 50. Uh, it pretty much just stays along with the other percentages going in a downward curve. Apart from the angle of 20, where it's actually lower than the angle at 22. I don't really understand why this is. Uh, it seems a little bit weird to me. But it basically means that anything above 25 degrees, you'll be able to not ricochet and hit it uh, hard. Whereas uh, if you hit above that, a lot of the time you're going to be ricocheting, apart from if you hit at 20 degrees where you only have a 25% chance. It just seems a bit odd. I feel like that number's kind of been fudged. I mean, between 19 and 17, it's 90% to 100%, but at 18, it's 50% as well. Uh, it seems like what they should have done here is put the 50% at 20 degrees and the 25% at 25 degrees, but instead what we have is them not there, they're actually in different places. So either that's a mistake on Mike's end or that's a mistake on the development end. It just seems very odd to me that that's where you put them. But yeah, those are the changes to the heat round you find on the T114. Basically, it doesn't change a lot, uh, it just means that some angles are more clarified, meaning that for you personally, it will be easier to work out if you're going to ricochet or not. The other changes uh, for the 20mm M693, the French coax, and then the 20mm MG15120 on the Lorraine 155, and the 20mm RH202. So I'm not sure what the RH202 is, but if we go to the French... The coaxial is the M693, and is that mentioned? Yes. So this is the uh, French coaxial. Actually, is the IH202 the one on the X, the KPZ? Yeah, okay, so that's the one on the KPZ. Is it on the other one as well? Uh, yes, okay. So um, what they've done is for the 20mm uh, coax that you find on stuff like the AMX30, They've, um, and also the 20mm that you find on the top of the Lorraine 155, if you don't know what that is, if you're new to the game, it's this, it was a gift vehicle, uh, I believe, in the Christmas events, but yeah, this is the 20 on top, and also for the KPZ and the MBT, with its top 20mm, they've changed the round from API to APIT, and this basically means that uh, you'll be able to be more uh, effective at uh, aiming it, I suppose. Overall, it doesn't really change a lot, especially with uh, the changes which are coming to uh, the other rounds. Basically, you have the AP effect, the incendiary effect, and then the tracer effect. So overall, yeah, it doesn't really matter. The 35mm Orlikan KDA uh, is going from API to APIT as well. I believe this is the one that you see on a bunch of top tier AA. So on this, uh, the AMX30, it's not there. But on the Type 87, there you go, the 35mm Orlikan KDA. I'm not sure if it's on the Marksman, but it is. And also, it will be on the Gepard. So yeah, those top three, uh, top tier AA, are going from API to APIT. So once again, easier to aim, but overall not that much of a difference. Uh, when it actually comes to it. If we actually check it now, in modifications, we'll be able to see. So it's APIT, and then it's HEIT, APIT, APIT, and HVAP. So yeah, overall, no difference. Uh, it just means that it's easier to aim, but with all three of these vehicles, you already have the 
um, lock-on system, I suppose you'd call it. Uh, so overall, aiming shouldn't really be an issue. Uh, the last thing is a bunch of ship economy changes, and I'm not going to go through these because the reason uh, for not going through them is because they're all based around silver lions, and that is not the issue with ships right now. The issue is research. Uh, so if you are really enjoying one ship, I'm personally really enjoying the LCS because it is really unbalanced right now, <laughs> But um, and also the PT boats, even though they're useless, um, I'm enjoying them too. Uh, but overall, uh, most of the ship economy changes, it's either decreasing certain things or increasing certain things by a little bit. The only thing that I think is worth looking at is the repair times, because some of them have been decreased and others have been increased quite a lot. But as I said, I'm not going to go through them all. It's a lot of uh, work to do it, and to be honest, until ships is at a point where... Uh, the research is, I would even say, one and a half times that it is. Um, it's just not really fun to play for me. Yeah, I can or I can make silver lines on it. Yeah, it's you know fun and enjoyable to do, but I can't get through a lot of the ships. Like I've done all of rank one and rank two of America. I started on Germany, uh, but now everybody has got the two point threes. You just get hammered over and over again and. Funny enough, what a surprise, even in a testing environment, people want to win, so they just play the stuff that makes them win. Who would have thunk it? Who would have really thunk it? My god, someday people will actually listen. But overall, yeah, uh, some ship economy changes, uh, they are not to do with research, just silver lines, and that's really about it from that front. I am going to get ready for work, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Uh, in a little bit, we'll have a video looking at my thoughts and opinions on the uh, event that's going on right now. But overall, yeah, I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time.